to let you guys know um, and introduce Ferenc. Ferenc comes up to us. He is the founder of Remick Trading Systems, a university lecturer at CEU. Very pleased to have Ferenc uh, here with us today. The title of today's event is going to be Automation Done Right with Remick. I'm going to uh, go ahead and try to turn it over to you, Ferenc. If you are able to get your screen shared there, we'll go ahead and get you started. Thank you very much. It's a lot of fun and a pleasure to be presenting today and also to be in the company of other good old friends and industry leaders. So my uh, presentation will be um, relatively brief and uh, I have a couple of slides to start with. I don't necessarily want to really delve in deep into each slide, but I wanted to just uh, throw up a couple of pointers where probably to which you can refer to later in more detail if you want. I'd like to just share with you how I look at automation and what the word automation means to me. So to me, automation is a continuum. Of course, one extreme would be zero automation. Everything's manual. And I'd like to stress that doesn't mean or wouldn't mean the lack of rules. It could still be rule-based, but all decisions would be made by a human. 100% automation theoretically is possible and then should human judgment and intuition obviously valued uh, potentially valued ingredients of a successful trading business be part of the decision making process in other words is there anything that is not we're just not able or it's not worth trying to get it coded into a computer program and last but not least can automation be a replacement for responsibility skills and discipline and all the, the skill set that successful trading requires. I leave it up to you. I don't claim to have the answer. I have views on it. We can discuss it later, but these are just the basic pointers. Now, moving on to practical, more practical questions. Whatever the degree, whatever degree of automation we're planning to incorporate in our trading business or trading activities as market participants, a couple of questions, actually quite a few, has to be considered and answered. So automation quickly becomes a more multifaceted and not as simple as it might seem at first. Questions, what to trade, when to trade, how much to trade, how will we manage the trade? What, what do we do once we're in a trade? Would there be any situations where I need to switch the system off? If yes, probably the answer is yes. I, th I think I'm pretty sure the answer is yes then we already need a trader or a skilled person to operate a machinery, as it were. Again, there must be rules. When am I going to switch it on again? And then, of course, risk management. This is a probabilistic outcomes are probabilistically uh, distributed. We must have some rules. What do I do if I have three losers, four losers, five losers? What, if I, what, what do I do if I have seven winners? Are there, am I going to have any rules? that would tell me that I have to switch on or off the system. By the way, to have five losers in a row uh, with an otherwise excellent system is, is uh, not, just, not just possible, but it's quite likely. So, and the next, do I have the skills and the discipline to operate this system? So I always think of the trading system being like an airplane and the trader being like the pilot. We must have the skills, whatever automation, and we have quite a few, obviously, on a modern airplane, but we still have a pilot, and the pilot must be able to fly the plane, no matter what the level of automation or the, what the status of the autopilot button might be at any given time. By the way, the pilot must, make the, must be able to make the decisions about when to switch on and off the autopilot button. Same thing with the trading system. And last but not least, I could think of many other questions, but I just put down one more. We, uh, most of us, I would assume that would be technical traders, which means we look at price. Other, there are other ways to make decisions, of course, in the financial market, uh, macroeconomic or, uh, or fundamental like earnings report and stuff like that. Uh, we as technical traders tend to uh, exclusively or mostly look at price information, price history, and make decisions for the future based on price history. So then the question comes in, is there anything that we should consider 
in our trading activities which are not technical, not price related? If yes, how? And how am I going to program that into my algorithm if it can be programmed, programmed into it at all? So as you see, the question quickly becomes rather complicated and some areas must be carefully considered. These questions must be answered by a human, of course, and also whatever the degree of automation, we can't avoid having to learn to trade. So automation is not a replacement for skills and obviously not a replacement for capital either. The next uh, couple of slides, I just like to run through it very quickly because we've discussed this on vari in various webinars before, uh, and they're available on our YouTube channel and on our website. So I'm just gonna point this out to listeners today who may not be that familiar with uh, Remac trading systems. So first of all, the way I see successful trading is like a three-legged chair. And the three things that we need for the thing to stand is capital, enough capital, an edge, obviously, a statistical advantage, and skills. And none is a substitute of the other or for the other, and automation is not a substitute for either, for any of the three. If it's anything, then it's rather an extension. The next thing I'd like to share with you is how we should think, how I think we should think about uh, patterns on, that we see on the chart. One way or the other, we as price or technical traders, and we look for certain some things to happen on a chart, which would uh, then tell us that it's time for us to enter the markets. And then other things happen on the chart that would tell us to stay out of the market. So we watch and monitor charts. Now, and then the next question is, well, what moves price? And of course, for directional traders, technically motivated directional traders, we need price to move in order to make money. So what moves price is the next question. And what moves price is not the number of buyers and sellers. I hear that all the time. It's not really the number that matters, but the imbalance between them. The imbalance between buyers and sellers is what moves price. And now the situation come, becomes a little complicated, a little difficult, and not a little ambiguous because not every imbalance on the market will show up as a pattern on the chart. Just think of it, large players have very sophisticated algorithms. What they wanna do is they wanna hide their tracks. So they, uh, they have all kinds of sophisticated things that they can do to make sure that we, we don't see what they're up to. So not every move will, not every imbalance or intention by large players will be shown on the chart. That's one problem. The second is that as a result of which we, we might, and we often do miss opportunities because it doesn't show as a pattern. The other thing that we have to consider is that when we see a pattern, when we see a pattern, it may or may not be a result of imbalance. If it's a result of imbalance, possibly we find ourselves in a good trade. If however, the pattern is a result of random movement on the chart, then it's just a random movement like a face in a cloud. It means nothing. So we never know for sure. And these, this is how I see the two problems of trading. Every time we enter the market, we do not know if there is an, a real imbalance which shows as a pattern and we're trading it, or we enter it a pattern, but it's just a random thing on the chart. That's where trade management comes in. And, uh, We'll get to that in a moment, but I wanted to just share this with you. And this is, I think, uh, quite important. We have to live with this ambiguity. There's no other way about it. All right, let's move on. There's one more thing I'd like to share. This is my, my sweet spot or hang up, uh, depending on how you look at it, but you, we simply have to do the math. On, uh, let me just share this with you. This, this calculator, we have several calculators on our website. If you're new to our website, let me just point you. It's right here on the first page. Minimum capital requirement calculator. You simply enter your data. You do, let's say, one, two, three hundred trades in simulation, of course. You gather your data because whatever automated system you're using and whatever the level of your automation, uh, your skills will be part of the equation. So you have to actually perform these trades as consistently as possible, gather your data, and then in the yellow fields, you enter your data, whether it's the ES or gold or, 
or a combination of two. If you trade several instruments, you would just enter the, the average tick value over a large number of trades. In any case, at the end, what you will find is how much capital you need to trade the certain strategy. The minimum stop would be a crucial ingredient in all these equations that are running in the background. And uh, if you, let's say, use a 100 tick stop, as soon as uh, it refreshes, it would show you what uh, the minimum required capital would be. Depending on the broker, you would enter the maintenance margin and other stuff like that. The other important data that is probably to some well-known, uh, maybe to some other traders not that well-known, is the maximum likely losing streak we have to count with over time. And this will be calculated for you automatically once you enter the data. And uh, however good your system might be, theoretically, the time might come, the day might come when you will have nine losers with these data, of course, you will have nine losers in a row. You will have to be able to survive a, a, your account, of course, uh, the, uh, a worst case scenario. And please remember, this is still supposing that I'm doing we're, that we're doing a perfect job. So this is not personal trading errors. This is with consistent and perfect execution. So if you if you actually add a little bit of human error, a little bit of flexibility, probably this number could be 11 or 12 because we're just not perfect. And uh, getting back to the the math part. So this is uh, there are other calculators on our website. I'm not going to bore you with them right now, but you can look around and uh, other aspects of your trading activities you can uh, calculate. This is probably where I would start and a uh, well, typical example. You have an excellent trading strategy. Uh, you identified your edge, you verified your edge, you know what you want to do, but the number you're getting here is a number which capital you do not have at the moment. So that means that uh, you know what to do, but you don't know, you don't have all the ingredients or the prerequisites to do it. And this is something that you should, you should know before you start the activities. So moving on, number four, and this is the last one. When we talk about backtesting, there seems to be a little bit of, a little bit of gap in our understanding. So I just wanted to lay it out here. To me, backtesting is a process and even more an ongoing process. Um, often I, I might speak to a trader and, um, and he or she might have done number one and think that the job is done. But number one is whether you do it on the chart or you do it in a strategy, strategy analyzer in uh, NinjaTrader 8, it's just the first step. If you go down here, this is a process which will then be, become, a, sorry, which will then become a reoccurring process cycle basically you getting back to automation you know that you see that when you get to number four trade a live account but with negligible size let's say a micro contract or just one stock or something like that but still do the right thing already but not worry about risk at that at this stage in the process you see that psychological factors enter the picture if not before probably before as well, but at this point, definitely. And, and that's when you see that whatever the degree of automation, the pilot still needs to have the nerves to fly that plane, to fly that plane. Same thing with us, we have to have the psychological skills to operate the machinery. Okay, and of course, number five is when the rubber hits the road. That's when you know that you're ready to deploy your system on the live market real size. All right, moving on, let's, uh, let me say a few words uh, very briefly about how we hope to provide a solution or at least help to our customers uh, in solving the, the problems and the challenges that we just uh, listed basically. And what we try to do with our products since just referring back to the first slide, the level of automation and the, the desired level of automation may be different from trader to trader and also depends on your personality and your plans, your preferences. We definitely wanted to, and we have designed products which cover the spectrum, which allow you to be in completely manual mode 
if that's what's required at a given moment, or become completely automated if that's what required at a given moment. Usually, since markets, since the situation and uh, on the markets change over time constantly, and uh, we, we trade a multiple instruments, multiple uh, market regimes, situations, and time frames, the range of or the degree of automation that you want to employ in your trading activity would probably uh, change over time. So it would depend on the situation. There may be times when you want to do everything manually. There will be times when you want to hand over control to the system and let the, let the autopilot manage the trade for you. So that's how we see it. And I hope to be able to show it to you how we are able with our products to cover that spectrum, whatever your trading style or whatever the market situation demands. We also offer guidance in how to think about ideal level of automation at any one time. So we provide workshops and uh, namely the, the, the premium service, which is a daily service. You're welcome to join or even try it out. Every software and every service or at least the premium service has a 15 day free trial, by the way. So it costs nothing to, uh, to test us out. And uh, basically, these are some of the main points that I can think of when, when we were thinking of uh, trying to help our traders in the trading community. Basically, we have, as you can see this little uh, image here, we have two main groups of products. One is our product line, which are two products actually, which are completely Blackbird and Bloodhound compatible. We've been uh, partners of Shark Indicators for almost 10 years now. The three here is just three editions of one system, and the three to the left is a Renko-based system, and we call it Remex, the Remex system. The point is, this is a Renko-based system. It is built for Renko bar, Renko chart traders. We used to trade Renko bars for years, four or five years intensively before the other products were designed and before the other products came to the market. By the way, these are all products that I wish I had had when I started trading. So basically by designing these products, I designed the products that I wanted to have. And uh, hopefully these will be products when you test them and test drive them, so to say, uh, will be to your liking as well. Moving on to the other somewhat more versatile product, which we call Remec Momentum. There, you see two boxes here. The same thing, basically, one is the standard edition and one is the pro edition. The pro edition has a couple of more bells and whistles. Otherwise, the methodology is the same. And this is also a completely Blackbird and Bloodhound compatible product. The Renko base, the Remex system and Remex Momentum and Momentum Pro. So to the left of this big red line, you do need to have Bloodhound and Blackbird installed on your system. So think of it like uh, Blackbird Bloodhound being, being a middleware between the Remec product and NinjaTrader. Now, we also wanted to do something different. And a couple of years ago, we came out with a simplified version of, of, um, of this strategy, the Remec Momentum strategy, which doesn't require a third party product. Obviously, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles and the amazing capabilities of, let's say, Blackbird. But we wanted to have something which is just to have a lean product. The original idea was to cater for traders who trade lots of products or monitor lots of products, let's say 50 or even 100. And we have a market scanner, which I'm going to show you in just one second. With the market scanner, you can imagine it becomes a little cumbersome to always jump from one chart to the other and wait for a certain strategy to load. So we wanted to design something that is, it is faster. So that's what it is. We call them standalones. You're welcome to try them out as well. And uh, last but not least, we have a service. So these were the products. And now we have a service, a daily service we call Remec Premium, where uh, if you join, you get a access to a special part of our website with daily videos and explanations and basically our own plan 
for the given trading session. This is, in my opinion, an excellent educational resource. And of course, it is for educational purposes only, like everything else that we are doing. And we share with you our insights daily, actually twice, or sometimes if there's something happens intraday, you might get an email if we think there is something important that you should instantly know about. And uh, there's also a nightly video and then other update pre-session Eastern time, so like 7, 8, 8.30. So you're most welcome to check out any of our products and any of our, uh, and, and the Remic uh, premium service. So at this point, before I share with you the special offers, I'd like to actually hop on NinjaTrader and also ask you if you have any questions. Uh, I'd like to share with you now or show you how we, how we put into practice all the things that I talked about so far. And uh, if you agree, we would, go through quickly in a few minutes, just on our product line one by one and show you quickly on the real market. I think we're connected, right? So it's uh, Friday around lunchtime. Who knows what we might run into, but let's start with the Renko based system. So this is what we're looking at now is the actual Remex system. The, this is of course, Bloodhound and Blackbird compatible. And what you're looking at is actually a combination of a Bloodhound algorithm and a Blackbird file, trade management file. This is, a, this is one part of our system. This is a Blackbird file. And the Blackbird file is open. It's not protected, not black boxed, anything. This, this comes as part of the Remex system as a product. And it's open for a reason, because actually what happens after you enter is very personal. We don't, we don't want to impose our style or our preferences onto any other trader. Just the most obvious reason, everybody's account size is different. Everybody's time frame is different, maybe different. So there's no one size fits all solutions here. This is a Blackbird file, which comes as a template, a pretty good trade management set for three contracts, but you're of course, you're encouraged to customize this to your needs. And, uh, and Shark Indicators has excellent resources. If you're new to Blackbird and Bloodhound, how to do that. If not, just uh, write to us and we offer free onboarding sessions and we'll be happy to help you to customize this file to your needs. So this is three contracts. Maybe some people wanna trade two contracts or five contracts and move the trailing stops differently. And uh, I'm sure later today, Shark Indicators will uh, tell you much more about this amazing product, Blackbird. So I'm not going to go into that right now, but the point about Blackbird is that you can, you can build your own trade management algorithm. This is an amazing product and uh, you can be as creative or as simple as you want to be. I'm just using now the default BBS file, Blackbird file that comes with the product. And what we're looking at now is three charts, you can also customize these. This is again, a default workspace. As you can see, we have a, our own triple R indicator, which is built into a market scanner, right? So the uh, triple R indicator, this market scanner, the way we call it, gives you a pretty good and quick overview of what you might be looking at. So as you can see, BTC is strongly bearish right now. So if I want to, if I click on BTC right now, then we would uh, be able to look at the charts actually and see what this bearish situation might be. And if we think we should get involved, we are on the RT, we are in the ES right now. So RTYES, the indexes are pretty bullish uh, in today's session. We trade actually, technically speaking, the re-emergence of momentum out of consolidation areas. Now that sounds very frighteningly technical, but it's actually quite simple. The re-emergence of momentum, that means that we're not trying to be the first mouse. We're trying to be the second mouse. This is what we want to do, catch the second wave. This is the emergence of momentum. Then we wait and we trade the re-emergence of momentum when buying starts again, if it's an uptrend. So basically we're trading moves out of a pullback to use everyday language. And this is what we do. The system is switched off right now. If I, let's say I just missed two 
pretty good one, good looking one. So right now, as you can see, my and this goes for all our systems. The default setting is I'm switched off. I'm in off mode. The autopilot is not switched on. If I decide that I will, I want to participate in the next pullback whenever, if and when it comes, then I switch on the system. And now I put it into, I activated the system and the system will be automatically be looking for the next pullback entry, the next reemergence of momentum out of a consolidation area. If I don't like the action or if I, uh, have when I have a coffee break or anything, then I switch the system off and there will be no trades. If you notice, the signals will still be on the chart, but there will be no trades. There is something, uh, there's another feature of the Remex system or Renko based uh, methodology. And as you know, the, the advantage of, and Renko traders will know this, I'm not saying anything new. The advantage of Renko bars is the fact that it hides the noise. So basically, it's, uh, it gives us clean trends and pretty clean and obvious entry points into the market. Now, there's an extra feature or more to the system. And that is just to start with the most obvious ones, the long and short modes, what we call long and short modes. And what that does, it limits or restricts the direction of of possible trades into the direction that I'm, I'm choosing. So if I switch this to long mode, short trades will be ignored and suppressed. That may come handy and does come handy if it's a strongly trending market where every once in a while you might get a short signal, but you don't, you're not interested in the short. Remember the algorithmic systems just do the math. What they do, they're not people. They can't think what they do. They can count at lightning speed. And mathematically, it is possible that you get a short signal in a very strong uptrend. As a human trader, you may not be interested in getting involved in that because you're waiting for the next long. This is what the long mode is for. And vice versa, this is in a given situation what the short mode would be good for. I often use the long and short modes. The more you use it, the more time I would think, I would say you will start spending in long or short. So the more deliberate you become uh, with how you want to trade. So, but auto as a default is an excellent way to start out at the beginning of the day in disabled mode, of course, because just by looking at the system or the signals, even though we were not here, we didn't take them, you will have a pretty good idea if the market is trending. So, and that's the advantage of the Renko based system. Okay, so moving on quickly, the next a uh, product that is Blackbird and Bloodhound based, but as you see is not necessarily Renko based, is what we call Remec Momentum. Now, what we do with the system is very similar with what we do with all our systems. So we trade the reemergence of momentum out of consolidation areas. And just by looking at the chart, it's very easy to notice the pullbacks and it's very easy to notice where our algorithm calculates the next potentially the next best entry now of course not everything will work this is a pullback sometimes it goes but remember when the algorithm calculates the that all the conditions have been met to enter a trade the future is still unknown so that's one thing so this entry seemingly didn't go too far, but basically all that happened is that instead of a simple pullback, we got a complex pullback like shaped W. And uh, that has a potential of shaking us out of the trade. So by default, I'm running ahead of myself a little bit, but by default, we try to use um, meaningful stops, let's say. So I, we don't work with very tight stops because we don't want to be shaken up by complex pullbacks in an otherwise strongly trending market. All right, again, the idea about long and short modes and restricting the mode or the direction of our trades is the same as with the Remex system. So we have kept that. And you see, you can switch to long and short mode if you so want. I mean, if you are a counter trend trader and uh, you are you are specializing in 
trading the mean reversions from the Keltner to the, to the midline area, by all means, you're welcome to use the short signals in an uptrend. I, uh, that, that requires quite some skills and you never want to overstay your welcome. And I don't think uh, for most people it's the easiest way to trade, but technically speaking, again, this is just a software tool, a very sophisticated, think of it as a sophisticated car, a race car or a Steinway piano. It is a tool which needs a pianist or a race car driver or a pilot, you get the picture. So this is a tool that can do anything you want it to do but you are the one who is who uh, is in the driver's seat at all time. Okay, also the, since it's Blackbird based, the BBS file is open. Let me just show it to you quickly. And here we go again, same thing as with the Remex system, you're welcome to customize it. Now, since we are running out of time, let me just jump quickly on our two products, which are but do not require a third party product. The idea here is the same as with the others. So we do have the modes, the implementation with the buttons are a little different, but, and this button is a little different. And you notice that we don't have Blackbird here. This system admittedly is much simpler in many ways, but on the other hand, it's a little bit faster. So let's say I'm on the GC right now, and this is for people who wanna monitor hundreds of instruments. If I wanna click on, wheat, for example, did you see I'm already, uh, well, I might take a moment here, but relatively speaking, it switches charts uh, pretty quickly. Okay, so I, we have deals for people who want to have both systems. Let's say you have two computers and you want to have one on which you monitor 100 instruments, including Forex stocks, anything you want. And then once you made your selection, maybe you want to execute the actual trade with the Blackbird version, but on Blackbird, you save a lot of time on the on that computer, the, the, uh, the production machine, as it were, you save a lot of time by knowing exactly what instrument you want to be on. Last but not least, one thing about this, this drives an ATM. And as you know, in NinjaTrader 8, ATMs are not back testable. So if I had the strategy on this chart, and if I clicked on the performance, you, you, you don't see anything because, not because we didn't want to give it to you, but because ATMs are not back testable in NinjaTrader. And the last thing I'd like to share with you is the BT version, the back testable version of this same standalone strategy, which was built in such a way that you actually, you can back, you can click on the chart, click strategy performance and get data of the performance. This is just uh, two, three days. So regardless of the numbers you're getting here, of course, this is, remember going back to the back testing process, this is just step number one. So we have at least five more steps to do, but this is how you would start. And also we have deals for people who might want to have both versions. And why you might want to have both versions? Well, the Pro STR gives you more manual control. You can actually, if we jump back, if you enter a trade very quickly, let me see what we can do here. I'm able to move the stops manually, just like we all know what we can do in NinjaTrader. With the BT version, that would not be possible since BT is a natively built and deployed strategy. So there's no you can click on the chart trader, it's grayed out now. Even if you had the chart trader here, you wouldn't be able to modify the stops. Uh, you, the only time you can modify the stops and the trading stops and all the rules is if you is before you put the strategy on the chart. I'll stop right here and uh, ask you if you have any questions. And uh, I also want to thank you for your attention. And if you'd like more information, please just write to us. And last but not least, let me jump on our special offer page and share with you that we'd like to offer you some deals today. And as a thank you for your attendance and your interest, first of all, you're most welcome to try any of our products for 15 day free of charge and uh, the Remec premium service also free of charge for 15 days. Last but not least, the Remec 33 code 
works on anything in our store, including the premium service. So if you'd like to not wait and jump in, then you're most welcome to use that code in the next few days. Again, thank you very much. Back to you, Will. All right, uh, thank you so very much. I thoroughly myself enjoyed your presentation as I'm sure that many others did as well. Uh, God bless you and, and um, everyone in your team. And we'll be back in about six minutes. Please look for the timer uh, coming here in just a moment.